ecology students today we're going to be talking about how ecosystems change over time this is called ecological succession we're going to be trying to answer this question has a forest always been a forest has a pond always been a pond and what happens to forests after a forest fire or after a pond gets flooded all right so we're going to try to answer these questions in class and also through these notes. And so to answer them, we first have to know what the definition of succession is. It's the natural gradual change in the types of species that live in an area. And it's always gonna be the same sort of pattern, which is really, really cool. The steps of succession are as follows, because those steps are gonna be the same for all changes in an ecosystem for the most part. Well. Before succession will really start, there has to be a disturbance in the ecosystem, whether that's a flood or a landslide or a fire, all right? Any sort of disturbance. It can be natural or it can be human caused, like logging, all right? And then when that is done, the area has been disturbed, whether it's left behind just bare rock or soil, there's not much living there. And the first species to arrive are called pioneer species. Remember, the word pioneer from like history class means the first to arrive to an area. These are very hardy species that make lots of babies and can grow really fast. Okay, they make lots and lots of babies. So bacteria, moss, lichen, and small grass, all those things will colonize an area first. So we call them a pioneer species. All right, so examples look like this. So we got mosses and fern. All of these things can grow on very little soil or even bare rock. Then what happens next is the simple plants will die and as they die they'll decompose adding more soil organic matter and as the soil layer thickens things like grasses and wildflowers and other plants can begin to take over. But it's not until we have a lot of plants that die and a lot more nutrients to the soil that we get things bigger than just grass and we start getting shrubs and even baby trees. So it's not for a long time that things that are bigger can really start to survive. And eventually, when there's more plant matter and more diversity, we start having insects and small birds and small mammals begin to move in. What was now, what was once bare rock or barely any soil, it can now support tons of diverse life. So what was really important was we didn't start off with a lot, remember, and we start having more dead matter, more soil, more things can grow. And by the end, we call that end point, that mature community, that mature ecosystem after many years, we call that this vocab word, a climax community. In our area, it's hardwood trees because we live in the deciduous forest. In the Midwest, all right, in the middle of the country, it would be grasses and prairies. And out west, think Arizona, right? We have cacti and deserts. So it depends what the ecosystem is, but most of the time, if we're from this era, we're picturing big, big trees and lots of diversity and big mammals. We can categorize succession into two major types. The first type is called primary succession. It will have the same process of going from pioneer to climax community, but the process will happen pretty slowly, all right? Because it'll be in an area that never supported life before. No soil, notice the bare rock here at the beginning, all right? So that area is very harsh and so things will only grow very slowly. So only things like lichens and really, really hardy grasses will be able to survive. But the big thing is primary means first, first life, no soil. So the first life ever is there, right? This will happen when there's brand new lakes, brand new ponds, cooled lava, sand dunes in a desert or on a beach, or bare rock because of a landslide. It's not very, very common, but if nothing's ever lived there and there's no soil, it's primary succession. Do you think it happens very quickly? No, it's gonna happen slow over hundreds of years because this takes so long to get nutrient rich and to gain this massive amounts of soil before big trees can start to survive. 
long, long time for primary succession to happen after a natural or human-caused disturbance. Secondary succession, on the other hand, is going to happen, well, second. So what do you think is there? even looking here at the beginning of secondary succession. We have soil, all right? It's going to be a faster process because it does start on soil. It can be caused because of human activities, such as cutting for timber or farming, overgrazing of animals, that's like cows eating too much of the grass, or construction projects that humans do. There's some natural things that could cause it. Volcanoes, if there is only some soil left but if it's just bare rock not so much but forest fires for sure hurricanes tornadoes and depending on how landslide goes that too but if i have soil it's secondary succession and this will happen a little bit faster so rather than 300 to 400 years maybe like 100 to 150 years we'd get back to our climax community so our question is has this forest always been a forest and the answer is no, probably not. There's been tons of changes, both due to human disturbance and to natural disturbance. And those changes over time, right, will cause the forest to go through the process of ecological succession. Especially if the forest has tiny trees, we know that it's likely that it just recently is getting bounding back after disturbance. Very cool. Good job, you guys.